What's up, Basketeers? Josh here, and today we're continuing our series on improv and soloing. However, you can just start here. You don't have to go back to the first video. What we're gonna be doing is jamming over this funk groove with a G Dorian scale, and we're exploring different musical elements in order to uh, improve our soloing and improvising. Today we're focusing on note length, okay? So what I'm gonna try to do here is demonstrate the problem I see most people having with their note length choices, okay? So just listen for a second. Okay, so is there anything you noticed about my choices in general with note length there? All short notes, right? It's hard, it's hard for me to know that I'm going to tell you not to play only all short notes all the time and still try to do it. But hopefully I succeeded enough. Um, so this happens a lot. Other teachers have pointed this out before. It's something about being new to soloing and being kind of nervous and also trying to play too fast sometimes. So you just end up playing a bunch of really short notes. So um, basically what we're gonna go for today is play with some longer notes so that we can have a range of being able to play short notes and long notes so that we have nice uh, phrases that feel natural and hopefully that feel a little bit uh, vocal, like like a voice might actually sing and not just like which is kind of what that last solo sounded like. Uh, okay, so uh, I will play, so let me stop the groove here. The challenge of this is that every now and then you have to take a breath and not be bl blistering your amazing chops for everybody to see while you just let a note ring out. Okay, so let me try to demonstrate this a little bit and then I'll give you some space to do it yourself. Okay, so that's sort of in the extreme, playing mostly long notes, and every time I played short notes, they were leading up to a long note. Uh, why don't you try a little bit of that? Again, we're kind of going to push too hard on the other side of the spectrum here, so even if it feels like too many long notes, just go for that, okay? G Dorian, whatever you want. Any notes of the scale are fine. Just really let them sing out. You can do a little bit of fake vibrato like I was doing, just kind of wiggle your finger back and forth. Uh, sometimes that helps the notes sustain on, on fretted instruments. Keep going a little bit more. A few more bars of that. Keep going, I'll, I'll talk over this while you practice that a little bit more. So if you think of like a singer like really belting and like thrilling a crowd and singing in an amazing way, usually think of them sustaining a big note, like ah, except I'm not an amazing singer, but you can imagine. Uh, that's what you think of when you think of a singer like really kicking butt is like big notes. So having some big notes in your lines is I think really key to making your solos listenable, okay? So they don't just sound like sound like a bunch of farty million notes. If you put some long notes in there, then you can get away with playing the million notes at the right time because there's still something for the ear to latch onto. There always needs, stuff needs to be going somewhere, okay? So having long notes is one way that you can have a destination at the end of your doodly 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 lines. That wasn't my favorite line, but... Um, <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Also, playing a bunch of fast notes creates tension, so having a long note where nothing's happening gives you some resolution. So there's a little bit of a flow with that rather than just constant beep boop 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 uh, Play with that a, a little bit more. Now, rather than trying to do all long notes, try to go for a mix of it, okay? And if you catch yourself going back into short note mode, throw a long note in there, okay? Go ahead, G Dorian. Maybe try doing some short notes real quick as a lead into a longer note. Let's do a few more bars of that. Two more. There's a couple different ways you can think about this short notes, long notes thing. So far I've kind of been using those words to describe playing notes quickly and short versus letting notes sustain for a long time, which is a long note, but it also is a long rhythmic value. Um, so doing a mix of fast notes and uh, slow notes is one way you can think of this. The other way is to just think about staccato versus legato, um, just taking the same rhythmic value. Like we'll just take quarter notes here. So this is a pretty staccato quarter note. Here's legato. Okay, so just letting notes sustain through their full value. So thinking uh, staccato legato is another way to get some juice out of this concept. For example, if I play all staccato notes, very short notes. It's okay for a little bit, but there's nothing to latch on to because everything's so short. So it's not even that I'm playing the notes too fast, I'm just not letting anything ring out. So on the other side, here's all legato. for the rests I put in, there's no gaps between the notes, okay? They're all flowing together. That's what I mean by legato. So again, in a good balanced solo, in general, you want a mix of staccato and legato. It's not that you're like calculating, okay, I did some staccato, so now I need legato. But you want to have a range available to you creatively so that you can make the decisions that you really want to make and not just be playing all staccato because that's what your hands tend to do. You want your hands to be a vehicle for your inspiration, not a limiter of your inspiration. As much as you can. <laughs> uh, we only have two hands and so many fingers, but we do the best we can. Um, so uh, I'll give you a little bit more time to play here. Try playing all staccato. Again, just soloing on that G Dorian, however you see fit. So it's not necessarily playing fast, it's just every single note is really short. So there's the attack and then it gets cut off immediately. And just see how that feels. A few more bars. Okay, now try all legato, and if you haven't practiced this before, you might actually need to practice it a little because it requires your technique to be pretty clean to keep the notes all flowing into each other. So this could just be... You could even just start with the scale and make sure you can do that with all the notes flowing together legato. Or if you're more comfortable, you can just keep soloing. Just keep everything connected. You might throw a rest in there, but when you're actually within a phrase, everything's connected. Okay, now let yourself do a mix of staccato and legato, so a little bit more freely. Just see if you're tending to favor one over the other and uh, maybe try playing with that. A few more bars. Great work. So in this video, we covered two aspects of note length that are really significant for improvising and soloing. First thing we talked about was quick notes versus slow notes, okay? 
being able to access a range of playing really fast diddly diddly dee and also letting some notes hang nice and slow da, 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 da. like more like a singer might don't you love listening to me sing that's the best part of this youtube channel um okay so uh quick notes versus slow notes okay not necessarily that you need to mix those in every solo but i want you to have access to those creatively and not always default to the quick notes because you're all tense and you want to impress everybody uh you want more of a free expressive experience if the quick notes come up then that's great if you want some slow notes in there then that's great too and you want to have access by playing with them in a practice-y and broad context the other thing is staccato versus legato okay ba -ba 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 versus da 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 where everything's connected a lot of people tend to play very 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 staccato in sort of an unconscious way before they think about this, so you might want to try overbalancing on the legato side just for practice and then let yourself mix them more freely. This is all, all this note length stuff is really getting your bass playing to sound more like a wind instrument or a voice or a bowed instrument. Um, something where it's more natural to play sustained notes. Uh, it's really easy to go beep, boop, 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 short little notes on the plucked instrument. Um, but I think it does us a disservice to not have access to those longer, more lyrical notes. So I hope this has been really helpful for you. We're going to keep doing these improv videos for a little while so that you have plenty of ideas to get out of your rut or just boost your creativity and become a better improviser and soloist. If you're enjoying these and you'd like to support me in continuing to make them for free, please check out my Patreon page. You can get rewards for supporting me there. And you can also buy my books at joshfossgreen.com. I will see you soon. Rock on.